most known human civilizations in the world came into being by rivers or streams. More than half of the most important rivers in Asia originate from the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. Snow-covered mountains and glaciers store sufficient fresh water for over one billion people living downstream. There are numerous lakes and magical hot springs here. Nourished by water, the power of life has become even stronger. In Pulan County, on the China-India border, a group of tired but excited Indians come to China through the Qiangla Pass. They came all the way from the plains of the Ganges to the plateau, around 5,000 meters above sea level, to complete a task that they have planned their whole lives. They are proceeding towards their destination full of excitement. मैं यात्रा का मूल उद्देश्य है यात्रा का खुद में परिवर्तन लाना ना घर खुला रखो देखो सब प्रकृति क्या की है सब कुछ इतना सब कुछ संभालते हुए भगवान ने हमको यहाँ से लेके आया उनकी प्रकृति तो हमने अनुभव की Mount Kailash means heavy snow-covered mountain and treasure of snow mountain. According to legend, it is the center of the world in the Bon religion, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Jainism religions, as well as the heaven for Shiva, a popular Hindu deity. Mount Kailash is surrounded by more than 200 glaciers the meltwater of which converges into four rivers, which are the main sources of several rivers in Asia, including the Yarlong Zangbo River, Ganges River, and Indus River. Mount Kailash is the god of snowy mountains and the source of many waters. Lake Manasarovar is said to be the place where gods bathe. The water in the holy lake can clean away dust and worries from a heart. A sacred ceremony is held by the holy lake. बहुत को खुद नसीब खुद नसीब समझ रहे हैं हम आपको और दोबारा आना तो जरूर चाहेंगे और उनको गिफ्ट की तरफ मेरे तरफ से यात्रा मैंने उन्हें गिफ्ट की है ये. As the journey ends, the most important commitment in a life is also fulfilled. Over the past few years, people have been keen on looking for the sources of rivers, as that could help them learn more about themselves. The sources of rivers have provided room for the collective imagination of civilization.
The Lansong River, which originates from the Tangula Mountains, becomes wider after flowing into the Hangduan Mountains. Two ethnic groups that depend on salt are living on both sides of the river valley. With Tibetan people on the upstream and Nashi people on the downstream. While Tibetans pay homage to God, Nashi shows respect for the Buddha. The two ethnic groups with different beliefs have been living in harmony. The two types of salt are made with the same method. The salt pan is supported by more than 10,000 cedar wood rods, each soaked with saline water. Women know the recipe for making salt. On the riverside, nature offers brine rich in salt. A salt pan is made from clay. Salt colors change with different clay colors. White salt is produced in the upstream area, and red salt is made in the downstream region. Sunlight, wind, and water produce salt while entertaining themselves. salt pan produces top, medium, and third level salt. Women make the salt and men sell it. Caravans climb over the Hengduan mountains to take away their salt. This is the imagination of human beings cooperating with nature in a sophisticated environment. Purchasing llamas in the Naikua temple bought new salt from the bazaar just now. <laughs> Dishes made with salt produced at the salt pans are delicious enough, even without other condiments. Monks aren't the only ones that like the salt at the old temple. Animals in the mountain will enjoy their regular breakfast, highland barley and salt. Many animals have made their home here.
Before flowing into the Yarlong Zhangbo River, the Lhasa River meanders past a small village. Bai Ma, a native in the village, is taking out a piece of cow leather from the river. This is how the local people tan leather. Bai Ma asked several people to help sew the leather pieces picked from water into a certain shape. Without drawing any lines, they cut the leather from experience alone. The cattle hide is cut into strips, which are used to piece larger parts together. Afterwards, the cattle hide is hung up on some willow sticks. A boat is built without nails. This is largely due to leather's strong flexibility and snap joints set by those sticks. Rubbing locally produced colza oil all over the boat and making the oil soak into the leather. Then, a boat is done. This kind of boat is called a cattle hide raft, which is an important waterborne transportation tool with a history of more than 1,000 years. In this village called Junba, cowhide rafts are used to catch fish. When a new boat is built, a celebration will be held. Because of their beliefs, catching and eating fish is a taboo for most Tibetans. Nevertheless, the Seoul fishing village has been established as a result of certain tradition. The boat is like a drum, embodying the power of the river. New boats are launched, indicating more fishing. The familiar smell makes fishermen lighthearted.
The rafts float on the water, waiting for fish to hit the net. Today's catch will be sold at a fish market in Lhasa. In the eyes of people living on the plateau, there are deities and fish in every river. However, there are no fish in the Tun Chu River. These old water wheels are driven by the water in the river. According to legend, when deciding to build water wheels, officials didn't allow fish to enter the river to avoid damaging the wheels and the fish. This explains why there are no fish here. What are these water wheels that drew so much attention used for? Siren Duoji and his wife will regularly cut up a section of their stored cedar wood. Driven by water wheels, cedar wood is smashed into wood paste. After drying cedar wood bricks, Tsuren Duoji begins to make various medical concoctions. Drug powder and cedar wood are mixed. They are squeezed into threads by tools made of ox horns. One needs to practice for several years to get the material to shape up correctly on a single try. This thing, which smells of the sun and rivers of the plateau, is Tibetan incense. That's the most Tibet 
Tibetan incense is mainly used for enshrining and worshipping Buddha. Dang Chu Danzang, abbot of the Minju Lin Temple, is also the one inheriting the skill of making Tibetan incense for the temple. The Tibetan incense here has a mysterious recipe and more particular applications. There is an ancient Buddhist college at the temple and many young monks have come here to study. These young monks test their wisdom through heated debate. The course schedule at the temple is very full. However, one course can lighten them up. Making Tibetan incense is deemed an extracurricular activity. People in different regions use different methods to make Tibetan incense. Only those who made good incense and got the approval of the old monks can enter the final stage to chant scriptures and receive blessings. This is Lama Danzang. He is left with a bucket. In the wind-blown sand, he walks across a desert area to look for a kind of special sand. A mountain by the Yarlong Zhangbo River yields a soft stone. The white sand brought to the temple is dyed into different colors with different meanings. After burning incense and chanting scriptures, young monks will begin studying the most important course of the year together with their teacher.
On the floor of the hall, white thin lines gradually form a sophisticated pattern with precise proportions. Colorful sand grains slip from fingertips to compose the image in everyone's mind. Over 40 monks are carefully erecting a mysterious building from four directions. The building gradually taking shape in the fine sand is called a mandala in Buddhism. It is the dwelling, city, and heaven of the Buddha. It is said that the Buddha drew pictures with his disciples in the same way. The colorful world in front is comprised of sand grains. The completed mandala is in preparation for the forthcoming Sakadawa festival. The Sakadawa festival is held throughout April in the Tibetan calendar. The month is said to commemorate the Buddha's birth, enlightenment, and the Parinirvana. Followers believe they can acquire far more merits and virtues than usual in this month by reciting scriptures, doing good, and freeing captive animals. Most fish in the village is sold at an aquatic product trading market in Lhasa. These days, more buyers came to the market One family in the city has spent more than 3,000 yuan buying fish, which is put into bags filled with oxygen. Now, they are driving along the Yarlong Zhangbo River. They stop by a wider stretch of the river and open the bags. They release the fish while reciting scriptures.
the most important day during the Sakadawa festival, people come to the mandala while holding an incense stick, waiting. They are about to witness an amazing, colorful world of sand disappear. Even a painstaking work can be put down with ease. Erased repeatedly so that it can be rebuilt time and time again. Sand turns back into sand. This is a small town with a little more than 1,000 residents. It looks like a hospital. 16-year-old Baima, who has suffered ONFH, has come to the town as she doesn't want to get married with her injured leg. The doctor in charge is Ba Sang, whose prescriptions always include taking baths in a hot spring. spring. After staying in the water for seven days, the eagle miraculously flew again. The hot spring is now called Eagle Spring. There are 12 different hot springs here. Everyone said to serve as adjuvant therapies for some diseases. As people try different springs, these waters have become social networks. Bai Ma has met many people here and has learned more about society. Some springs need to be hit with rocks in order to release their water. Every day, some come from other places and some leave. Outside the Eagle Spring, there are many walking sticks left behind. Yeah. 
Tu yang tu nak tur tu kian tu. Bazar tu tu dia muda. Kalau kalau penjim. Kos. Basang has long wanted to know why hot springs have such magical curative effects. He has taken samples from these pools in hope of finding a scientific explanation for their miraculous functions. After analyzing these samples, he found some beneficial mineral substances in the water. Basang often goes to the mountains. This is called Medical Valley where some materials for making Tibetan drugs can be found. These materials may have developed under the influence of hot springs. Dr. Basang has gradually realized that the best therapy is environment. Here, people don't consider themselves as patients. They take baths, have medicine, chat, and bask in the sunshine. They either participate in various recreational activities or just sit. They are born in nature and recover in nature. There are over 600 hot springs in Tibet, but not all of them are suitable for bathing. In this geothermal area, spring openings can be seen everywhere. This spring erupts at intervals it can reach up to 90 degrees Celsius. La Mu, who studies at a university away from home, returns for a summer holiday. Recently, something has weighed on her mind. Eggs boiled in hot springs are tender inside and tasty outside. The eggs Lamu boiled today will be sent to her beloved one. Shi Rao, who works in the village, will go to the grassland to graze his yaks today. Do 
Aleluya. Ya no ve que. Ya, usted ya tiene que ganar. Bueno, ¿qué es? Un poco They walk slowly around the holy lake while praying deep in their heart. The love between them is growing gradually. Far away stand mountains and forests. Nearby lies the clear Chuopu Lake. Only one shout will attract the fish. Shiro is not good at expressing his feelings. Suddenly, he throws the auspicious Feng Ma papers into the air. Good feelings in the heart grow quickly like forests. The beautiful scenery in their hometown helps save many words. <laughs> <laughs> 